I just want to get that out of my system. Yeah, uh, there's been some different priorities. I know NA prioritizes the block a lot higher than Europe. Yep. Europe has been a lot heavier on Rakan and Thresh, whereas recently I feel like NA has gotten a little bit more on that train, but is more towards Tom Kench and Braum. More interestingly, though, I feel like G2 has been a little bit lost in the pick and ban phase for a lot of the summer split, even if they had good drafts in the spring. Jed, we all agree with you. G2 Esports said it themselves as well. Not really finding the form, uh, not understanding the meta. I think week five, they did kind of adapt. We saw some more tanks coming in, more CC, less about just winning lane. This pick and ban phase right here, you see Lee Sin on your screen from Sven Skeren. It is not banned away by G2 Esports, something we have seen in North America quite a lot. And Svenskar most of the time will then grab Lee Sin for himself when it is available. Yeah, he has been 10 and 2 on Lee Sin, as you can see there, and 6 and 5 on other champions, which is pretty notable. But at the same time, uh, TSM doesn't think they need to rely on it. It's just uh, kind of ended up that way since I feel like he's way better on Lee Sin than he is on any other champion. Let's see, Lee's open, not normally a first pick for G2 Esports. They're looking at one of the remaining mid laners, potentially with LeBlanc and Talia gone. And they do lock it in very early on. Uh, we see this from Perks. Yeah, well, Cinder is also a champion that Bjergsen has been willing to blind pick in a lot of different situations. It also kind of blocks your Orianna play, and the champions that most people will play into Syndra, like the Fizz or the Echo, do put you into a little bit of that split push play style, which is something TSM hasn't been very comfortable running this year. They could just take Galio mid if they want to, uh, and just play it against the Syndra, which is obviously a matchup that's fine for Galio. Uh, obviously, right now, every single Reddit Ooh. analyst is mad, because if this becomes Bjergsen's Galio mid lane, <laughs> it didn't get a lot of fans, even yeah. though it's actually perfectly fine. A, it didn't get a lot of fans, but B, it also got nerfed on patch 713. They were pretty substantial nerfs uh, to his wave clear in the full tank build, which is actually the build you want to go against Syndra. We're going to see the Elise locked in over the Lee Sin for Svenskeren despite his success, and G2, they can just go to uh, Rex if they wanted to. Yeah, and this explains why G2 didn't want to ban away Lee Sin. They had a complete different first pick in mind, so they kind of Probably predicted that Elise would still be the go-to pick for TSM. I think Rek'Sai uh, is an interesting choice here. Uh, it's very common, you see this early on, but obviously something we've talked about with the NA casters is not a lot of success around the world, uh, or at least in EU and NA, when it comes to uh, Rek'Sai. And that Yasuo hover, just a little bit of a troll from Perks. <laughs> Had a lot of fun with the NA casters while we were, or we were at MSI. Gonna pivot away and lock in the Braum. So Miffy gonna have a comfortable support in that bottom lane. One of the preferred supports in 713 as well. Yeah, I think Braum is one of the best supports on this patch and it's pretty safe to pick blind right here. Wouldn't be too surprised if TSM ends up going with Tom Kench before the break right here, uh, just to match roles and also get that so they don't ban it. Well, does that set us up for potential AD carry bans or solo laner bans? in phase two knowing that that galio is still taking like a flex i mean i think a lot of times you see top lane bans come in right now like things like renekton and fiora that can be really hard to deal with if you get a bad matchup top lane tend to get removed when you have this kind of setup but of course if it is a plant galio top which i'm not too expecting uh, then yeah. yeah you might just see pure top lane bans from tsm but i don't think that's necessary uh, needed yeah the one bit of flexibility that tsm has here is that they can run that galio in mid or top lane whereas syndra most definitely has to go in the mid lane and usually when you see these compositions with the Galio, you do want to go with a much higher damage top laner, considering things like Elise or Tom Kench are not adding that much damage. So Haunter needs to be relied on for a lot of damage, which means G2 should be banning some of those carry lane bully tops. So with the double lift as well, missing his A to carry, we saw Jin being picked in week five, even first picked by TSM mm. uh, over in North America. That was also paired with Tom Kench in some of the games. Yep. Uh, could be a go-to choice for double lift, and then you can still last pick either top or mid to save the flex for as long as possible. If you are uh, G2 Esports, like with Banning Nar, I'm looking at Renekton. But uh, TSM also looked at Renekton and removed it. Yeah, I mean, this to me signals that Haunter wants to play something like Fiora, because Renekton is one of the things that you're okay taking into Fiora, and they want to be able to get going in that top lane. Or they're just waiting for an Echo mid lane and they're going to throw that Galio top. They still have that flexibility. Kled is also an option. We have to remember with uh, Horns up in the top lane, valued very highly uh, last week by TSM. But I think uh, here in Europe, a lot of top laners feel like there is a lot of fine matchups against Kled. So you're not really afraid of the blind pick Kled uh, coming in. I think it's going to be Trist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is this is interesting because. I did talk to Doublelift about his Jin pick, and he says they picked it because they see other teams do really well with it. Not because they are necessarily good at it, but the Trist is something that he thinks is OP right now, and that not that many people play. Plus, it does work well with Galio protection.
I do wonder if Fiora blind pick is actually an option here for G2 Esports. Uh, you've already taken away different uh, top lane matchup like the Renekton, uh, even though it is a skill matchup. Some top laners don't really want to play it if you're against Elise, because obviously, like, Elise Renekton is the thing no one wants to play against, against yeah. ever. Uh, otherwise, they do need a frontline tank, which is what they're kind of lacking on the side of G2. Yeah, if they lock in the Gragas, I think that's quite a good pick, as long as uh, they don't let whatever top lane carry TSM would go with carry over, just because having the Braum to, to protect Zven's Kog'Maw, I think is huge. And that's that's actually a very nice team composition. Good frontline, good CC, and a great carry. I'm just scared of Fiora coming in here uh, from, from TSM. I think that could be a super good pick with Galio in the mid lane. You have AP as well coming from Elise. So I think actually could be very well-rounded comp with Fiora getting a fine laning phase. Kennen is something that's been actually now nerfed a little bit or changed a little bit, and it in the end, it comes to Good old top lane where there are like 20 viable picks right now. You can just yeah. throw them out left and right. Everyone has different opinions on what you need to play. Now, Quartz a little bit off guard of that job and the fourth pick from Hornsa has played it twice in the split already. Uh, one win, one loss. What do we think of these two team comps? Jat, you've summarized the G2 comp relatively well. What are you seeing from TSM? Yeah, well, I do like the G team comp, G2 team composition more right now, but for TSM, I feel like this is something where they almost have to be lane dominant. You have the Jarvan and the Galio, which went ahead is a nearly unstoppable initiation because you Jarvan alt and then Galio alt in there while people are stuck in the Cataclysm. But if you don't have enough damage, you're basically going to be initiating to your own demise. So I think it's very important for TSM to get an early lead if they're going to run this team comp. Yeah, exactly. I'm really looking at that mid game from them with Tom Kentrell and Galio ulti, like you're extremely mobile as a composition to kind of move around and force some of these skirmishes within Jarvan and Elise as kind of your main engage in that sense. I think just the scaling on the side of G2 with a tank top lane plus, of course, a hyper carry for Sven is something in the late game that's going to be uh, really good for G2 Esports. And they kind of tried this at MSI where they said, you know what, TSM, we don't want to talk about 40 minutes. We just want to <laughs> go to 50 minutes, 60 minutes, and then try and win the game. And it did work, but it was risky. Yeah. It was very risky. It was a 1-1. One one. One. a very strong term. Ladies and gentlemen, for the entirety of Rift Rivals, jump onto Twitter and use that hashtag NAWIN or hashtag EUWIN. Let's see who will draw first blood as the two Spring Split champions take to the Rift for one more time. TSM G2 in 2017 are at 1-1. One and one. Somebody gets an advantage today. And even in Berlin, Germany, the North American squad has the crowd support. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited for this event, Quickshot, because normally we get these really small tastes of the EU versus NA rivalry, which is so, so heated. I mean, just at MSI, we got to see EU versus NA twice. Two games. We're going to have six EU versus NA games today, six tomorrow, six the next day. We might overdose on EU versus NA, but it's going to be fun. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see if one side gets extremely mad or anything. But uh, first game here for G2 Esports and TSM, I think. Uh, interesting story with G2 Esports. If you have not really watched them since MSI, where, of course, they, they really peaked and make, uh, made the final, not been the same G2 we've seen in the first few weeks in the EU LCS. Uh, they took a break, been behind on the meta, been struggling as a team to kind of figure out how mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. And I think now they actually enter Rift Rivals as probably the weakest of the three EU teams. I'm glad you're getting the excuses out of the way right off the bat. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get everyone up to date here, Jad. I'm trying to be a nice yeah. guy. I do agree with you. G2 has kind of had that MSI leg. I think something similar happened to COG last split. And even listening to some of the things G2 has been talking about, it's the same story. They say they came back, they had a week before the summer split. They were so polished with the meta back at MSI that they took a really long time to adapt to the summer split meta. And for a team like COG, they actually never got back to that point in 2016 from where they were at MSI. So G2, obviously you said their last week in the LCS did look a lot more like G2. CC heavy team compositions, lots of tanks in the front line. And they've gone with something similar this game. I want to talk about this. Uh quick leash we see right here. There's something actually I've noticed a lot in North America. Yeah. Where you start your Raptor camp, but you don't actually fully kill the Raptor camp. Yeah, this is something that I saw Phoenix 1 do very early, and I was wondering if European teams were going to end up doing it, because if not, I would think it would be a, an advantage for North American teams coming in here. As the blue side team, that jungler gets 
pretty much a full camp advantage on them. And Trick, even though he didn't kill the big raptor, if he clears Wolves, Blue, and Gromp, he still hits level 4. Or what he can do is actually rush level 3 and then gank top lane very early. This is one of the benefits of this leash and something some of the teams are trying to figure out, you know, how do we deal with it? Another option if you want to do this in solo queue is you do one experience quint and then you get this leash here and you just go after you killing, you know, the raptor camp or most of it, red buff, mm -hmm. and you go kill the rift scuttler. And then you look for super early gank as a jungler. He's already top lane now, a little bit later than a 235 we're normally looking at when you're doing this uh, red buff leash. But he's saying, you know what? I'm not going to gank yet. I'm yeah. just going to fully clear my jungle. Well, Hauntzer did get that ward, so I imagine Expect would have called out the ward. He's still going to hit level 4 extremely quickly, and junglers are on different sides of the map here. So I'm a little interested in what Svenskaren's doing here. They've kind of called out the jungle path now that they see the Krugs are available. Basically, if the Krugs... If Svenskaren makes that move and the Krugs are gone, they know Trick would have done a 3 yep. camp and recall. So now they should be able to predict his general position on the map. I mean, they're reading the situation. Well, Mithy's reading double lift. Devar comes down from Bio Frost and Stun connects. Mithy and Sven happy with the trade thus far. Not going to commit further as the Caustic Spittle tags double lift. And look at the minimap. Sven Skaren's around. The shenanigans aren't over yet. Look for the cocoon. Sven Skaren needs to fire a cocoon. It's flashed away from. Has Sven and Mithy escape? Yeah, it's really hard here. to pull off. I really feel like they should know that also Elise is on the bottom side. Obviously, they were pretty far back, but they still lost that flash because when you're making the play on top side, Elise can't really do Raptor Cam red buff into her. Crook's on the top side. Mm -hmm. So you know she's going bottom lane, and that's a little bit odd that Sven and Amithi ended up actually not having any sort of information, or at least early on, to then dodge the gank. They do have a ward place now. Yeah, I will say, though, that G2 was playing very well back in the lane. So, yes, Sven did have to burn flash. He may not have even had to if it would have landed. Uh, there's a chance they can survive that with the Braum. So I do feel like they were playing the lane pretty conservatively because they did not have jungle pressure, and it is just the flash that Sven loses. Well, good to see Sven's flashing this time around at MSI. He didn't flash a couple of engages from TSM that ended up hurting him. Um, let's look at uh, the TSM side a little bit because we talked about the G2 struggles in summer coming back from MSI. Team Solo Mid, currently second in the North American LCS. Seven mm -hmm. wins, three losses. Is it fair to say a slow or shaky start to the split and ramping up over time, Jax? Yeah, I think it's safe to say it's been an uninspiring start. A lot of the games they win, they don't win convincingly, or even the best of threes. You can see the game win-loss at 16 and 7. So neither of these teams, I think, hit their full stride yet. I think TSM, um, especially week one and two, like very shaky. Week three and four, they started winning a lot of games in a row. It was actually a fairly impressive streak they were on. Mm -hmm. And then obviously they lost to C9 here week five before then winning the next series against uh, Immortals. So a lot of people, I feel like from North American side, are somewhat hyped about TSM, but not like we saw, you know, going into Worlds last year where people felt like they were looking super good. Double though, training with Sven. Oh, a lot of damage back and forth. Devourer comes out, Sven cannot flash to chase. Ends up being very close, but double if escapes with his life. Yeah, summoner spell discipline there. Both support saving exhaust, both ADs saving heal. Really a close laning phase so far. Sven having to play without his flash technically gives TSM a little bit of an edge, but that doesn't actually make you do more or less damage in those trades. Yeah. If they can return Ganga, they might be able to pick up a kill, but Sven Skarin is topside right now. So is Trick. Both junglers up here finding each other. Have to remember double TP on TSM in case a fight breaks out in the bottom lane as well. Very easy for Jarvan with ulti to get onto him. Top lane now is the focus. Yeah, Trick did sneak past Fen Scarin without him seeing. So this is a gank where Hauntzer will be going aggressive first. And this is the right setup for a counter gank if G2 wants it. First Blood is on the cards. Knockup finds nobody, but Sven Skirin is unborrowed. Cocoon lands. First Blood is going to be available and picked up by Hornsa. Sven Skirin is not going to die. He sinks the fangs in. Finally, no fighting. to expect. Expect gets six as well. The battle comes mana. back. The minions are working in his favor. Body slam finds a target. Hornsa is running for his life. Flashes to safety. Smart by Hornsa in the end, saving that flash. He knew, OK, I need to just dodge the barrel from expect, and I will survive. So he gets out, but one for one. First blood in favor of TSM. Yeah, and the positioning was actually heavily in favor of G2 right there. But what ended up happening is Expect and Trick were both in the brush with which Hauntzer flag and dragged into. You don't actually want to group up for this flag and drag. Everyone level 
five, but he gets both of them with the initial set of damages. And then Fence Garen is able to repel after landing his cocoon, buying enough time for Hansard to hit. Then he lands his cataclysm. <laughs> but Fence Garen's got no flash and no repel. Yeah. There's a turn on the other side, so like, what is he really going to do? Tries to edge a little bit of damage in throughout the cataclysm, but then expect hit six off that kill and kind of turns it around. So Hansard instantly TP'd back to lane, expected on that much earlier, which means the TP advance will go in favor of G2 in a few minutes, which can then make it very easy, of course, for Sven to get his flashback up. And then maybe if you are G2 Esports, you can actually start trying to make a play around bottom side. But it does require Perks as well to leave this mid lane. And despite the nerfs to Galio's early wave clear, he's still able to do more than finding this lane. Yeah, of course, this mid lane has been fairly non-interactive thus far, both Bjergsen and Perks access to their ultimates. Talking about some of the first backs, double if BF Sword to Sven's uh, Vamp Scepter and Long Sword. And we'll take a look at how these bottom lays continue to progress. Sven's flash is almost available as both uh, duos get closer to level six. And G2 already trying to clear out the wards, clear out the scuttle, get a little bit of control on the sort of south side of the map. Yeah, and with the Galio, the aid that TSM can add to the bottom side is greater than that of G2. So it will be difficult for G2 to make aggressive plays, which is why it's also important that they get so much control over the river right there, because if they are going to go aggressive, they want to have as much certainty as possible that it at least isn't a three on three where a Galio can turn the tables. We take a look at uh, Trick right now. One of the changes is once again here on 713. It's of course Bami Cinder. A bit better now for Junglus in the early game. And he's going for that Cinderhulk Greg side. We see some people go Warrior Enchant, some people go on Cinderhulk. Should be then a Tiamat coming in as well from him. Just to again make sure he can actually deal some damage and also power farm in this jungle here. So early, Bami Cinder increasing his clear in the jungle, benefiting from the new patch. Yeah, we'll see what itemization decides to go to next. Looking at the minimap, all of the vision from G2 from that river clear gives them a lot of control down there. And Double Lift, one of the more outspoken NALCS players coming into Rift Rivals. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, he has to wait now. Because all of a yeah. sudden, the barrel comes out. That's a good, good stun into the wall. Cataclysm comes down, but Haunts has got no flash. And G2, make that look easy. Really clean gank. Specifically expect chaining the stun after his ultimate, giving Trick time for the knockup. There was so much chain CC right there. And Jarvan in lane uses his spells a lot for his harassing pattern. Haunts are barely not having them back up in time to get away. So just a strong gank there by Trick and Expect. Sven Skarin trying to set something up in the river. Mid lane, Rather, Durand comes out, gets the cleanse, and Bjergsen maintains some semblance of pressure in this lane, continuing to shove it down. Take a quick glimpse down bottom. By the way, Double Lift is up 12 CS to Sven as he turn around the engage. Keep choking down. There's the devour. We've seen this trade pattern. Time and time again, it's not over though. Couple of things, they took a bad trade, but they also know cleanses down. So if Bjergsen flashes for the taunt, they're gonna try and get a gank with Elise. That's a flash over the wall, follow flash from Bjergsen. Taunts come out, wins of war and the cocoon. Team solo mid, get their first kill in the mid lane. Spin is the target of the bomb. And as we tick over 10 minutes, plus 12 CS advantage for double if Biofrost is about to get stunned up by the passive from Mithy. Yeah, G2's bot lane though, they have to back away because they know Bjergsen and Svenskaren already left the mid lane. I really like this uh, style from Svenskaren. We see quite a lot in NALCS as well, where early focus around Bjergsen in the mid lane, even on things like Galio, where normally, yes, he's not going to be your main carry, but the fact that you can set up that play twice, one forcing the cleanse and then actually getting the kill. Super good setup from TSM. Yeah, and I think Trick should have been there. His Raptors are up soon. He was down clearing Krugs. Knowing the way TSM plays, when you're down a cleanse on Syndra against a Galio who didn't have to burn his flash, that return gank is coming. And actually, with the way they dove through the turret, I think the counter gank could have been quite strong. I actually feel like we see this quite often from G2, but let's talk about it after, because top lane, three man. Well, Alex Beck's just gonna die. Heroic entrance into the taunt and a justice punch to secure the kill. TSM with a strong advantage. Yeah, so in the start of the split when TSM played Galio, it looked like they were without a purpose. Here, they're immediately playing around their strengths, but G2's got a brain too. They're going where Galio isn't down bot side. Do you have to remember double TP from TSM? They're using one right now from the fountain. Javan still didn't use his. Perks. Perks is here for the wave clear. Yeah, Perks has joined the fight. Tower first blood also gonna go the way of Team Solo mid. This is gonna be a nearly 2,000 gold lead for the North American Spring Champions. It's just very good communication from TSM after getting the advantage mid, knowing, okay, now we can make a play topside because they also saw Trick on the bottom side of the map. 
and then suddenly it's a kill top lane into a tower, and you instantly send the one guy who can wave clear, the Galio, to the bottom lane. And gentlemen, for about two minutes I've been trying to talk about this AD, AD carry matchup. It's not about the AD carries and right it's now. it's not. The game is being played on every other lane. But very quickly, because we do have some of those numbers, double lift plus 12 CS over Sven. And in the NALCS, he averages plus seven. Typical as I try to talk about it. And there's going to be another gank. Sven Skeren, let's see the cocoon. Whoa. Flash is sidestepped. Perks read him like a book. It's actually funny because Sven Skeren tried to walk into the lane and be kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to flash for you. I'm just going to walk right back out. And then, bam, he goes for the flash. Uh, what's well read here by Perks, though, with the boots? Yeah, definitely over-aggressive there. Uh, also, the early Mercury treads trying to make the CC chain much more difficult for TSM. The last gank was created by... Bjergsen getting the taunt off by Galio. Not a very long duration taunt, and then landing the cocoon. But the more Merc Treads you have, the more you can juke around, the harder it is to chain those CCs. Now, what we see in the mid lane here is something we've seen quite a lot in the EU LCS as well, where teams are trying to punish Perks early on in the mid lane by ganking him a lot, because I actually feel like Trick and Perks' synergy has not been too great uh, after MSI. We did even see some issues during MSI uh, between them where... Trick is not always where Perks needs him to be, and the other way around. So it's actually rare we see that combination of Perks and Trick that we used to see like a year ago happen all the time from G2 Esports. Sven Skeren and Bjergsen are definitely more on the same page. And we see that in this game as well with multiple ganks around mid. Yeah, Team Solo mid, three kills to two. They've got the tower at the cost of that Cloud Drake. And if you look down the list, Team Solo mid with a strong early game yet again against G2. Trick's gonna get caught by the Cocoon. Devour's available. Stand behind me gets used, as does the uh, uh -oh. Now Sven Skera is the target. He jumped in with the Repel, gets killed by Sven. Support comes in for Team Solo mid. Bjergsen decides not to save Sven Skera. In the end here, TSM going a little bit too deep, thinking they can one-shot Trick. We've also seen that play quite a lot, I feel, with Sven Skeren trying to go in and actually finish a target. And in the end, Trick just flashes away. So, yeah, both teams here in the early game trying to be very active with the junglers. And we've seen now some good moves and then some shaky moves. Yeah, definitely some over-eager play right there. TSM did have Hauntzer in the back, which was great if, t if G2 was going to aggress on TSM. But do not blindly chase into the dark and scary jungle, especially, especially under uh, AP Elise. Yeah, and also when Doublelift is sitting in the lane, bot lane, and the enemy AD carry, he's missing. Where, where could he be? Oh, he's right there. He's ready to take the fight. Yeah, this could also be turret. But look at the supports on the minimap. Team Solomit coming in. Abyssal Voyage is going to deliver Sven Skeren and Biofrost. Sven is the target, but it's Trick and Mithy taking all the damage. Spect is here. Just two. Here comes Expect. Needs to oh, use the barrel to reset hard. Gets rid of double it. Hornsa locks Sven inside the Cataclysm as Bjergsen takes him down. That's a double kill for Bjergsen. Cocoon on the back end secures another kill for TSM. We talked about how Tom Kench and Galio together with the mobility they have, they can set up some of these plays here where G2 will maybe not expect it. And after they actually punish Sven Skarin for being too aggressive, they push for that one tower. They saw it right in front of them, but Perks, of course, unable to join. And then suddenly, Tom Kench ulti into a Galio ulti and everyone from TSM is in the bottom lane. Yeah, the timing of that gank was perfect for TSM. Also using the global so well. They've been great at using things like Rise Ultimate and Talia Wall. And this is just another example of that. So Tom Kench comes in with the Jarvan, then they immediately get the galley when they're so three people essentially teleporting into the middle of the lane. Expect tries to match, but he's too slow, and Perks also isn't there. So CSM had five people there from the beginning, whereas for G2, it was three, and then slowly four, and then the fifth, and never is it an even-numbered fight. They end up losing four people and the turret. A disaster for G2. It's one of those moments as a team where instantly on the comms, you're just like, oh, Tom Kench ulti. Oh, How do we forget oops. about that? How and do we not the think about it? And then the Galio, of course, joins in right after. TSM actually had that control ward placed very early on on their own blue buff just to make sure that, you know, Bifrost can actually ult from there if needed. And of course, he knew no one was going to spot him. And these are some of the conditions we talked about in Champ Select for TSM where if they get ahead, they can just throw themselves at G2, and it will be very difficult for G2 to disengage. Luckily for Sven, he saved his flash, because if the Kog'Maw flash is down in the late game, Jarvan ults in, Galar comes in afterwards, and there is no surviving that, because it is just a, ter just a tremendous chain of CC. That's what I call a small win for G2. <laughs> yeah, you lose like three or four guys, but you're to carry safe flash. It means he's not going to get insta-give for the next five. That's true. Oh, ever the optimist, Jets. I appreciate that here.
on the desk as G2 were struggling in their opening game. Um, like, Harkening back to MSI, G2 were down on average uh, 1.6k gold by 20 minutes. That's it? So around 3,000 uh, more than that now. Yeah. But against TSM, in both of those games, at certain points, G2 was down 8,000 or yes. more gold and was in position to win both of those games by the end of it. So this is incredibly similar to the games we saw TSM versus G2 at MSI, where once TSM reached this point, they didn't know what to do, and G2 just scaled up to win. Luckily for TSM, there's no, a new objective we didn't have during MSI, the Rift Elder you can use to actually say, well, maybe we should get that mid lane tower down. Let's get some help. That's what I'm trying to look for here. Meanwhile, Hauntzer. Stun needs to find Hauntzer, and it does not. Perks doesn't even pull the trigger. TSM are going to be able to use the Rift Herald to accelerate their lead as G2 continue to struggle. I mean, just look at some of their other stats here in the summer split. Uh, they barely get first bloods, 30%, eighth in the league. Uh, they get a low amount of barons thanks to their losses and struggles. Down only 100 gold against EU teams, but apparently NA greater than EU as we open up Rift Rivals 2017. <laughs> I mean, this is why I was uh, saying to everyone earlier that Making G2 Esports, I was preparing it because <laughs> now it actually fits really well. They have still been struggling a lot uh, here in Europe. I still feel like TSM has actually just played really well in this game here, We're using the Galio and Tom Kench so effectively to create so many different plays. And Bjergsen right now, 3-0-3, even getting some Dark Seal stats in there. So basically he's saying, that buff to the AP ratio on my Q? Yeah. Galio got buffed, boys. <laughs> Didn't get nerfed. <laughs> the nine Dark Seal stacks coming in huge. And this is, this is uh, Parth. Uh, holding up a uh, middle finger to the people that said they shouldn't be practicing Galio because <laughs> clearly, damn boy, the practice was worth it. Well, definitely working out. Trick decides to try for the Dragon Force to flash out. So he's at risk of being instigated. Got that sent, um, Cinder Hulk and the Merc trades and not a lot else. Uh, currently thrift shopping at the moment. If you're TSM, Trevor, um, you look at this mid lane and you say, this tower is actually going to die, almost going to fully die to a charge of the Rift Hell itself. If you ever leave it with your wave clear, which is perks, Hanser it's all going to Hanser is fine. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's baiting the team away from mid lane. He's like, come on, Svenskjern, get in that mid lane, place the rift out, get the last out of turret. We're going to have three lanes we can push deep in. We have time casualty to go from mid to whatever lane we need. They just want this mid lane tower down, but obviously with perks sitting there, trying to stop it. It's not happening, is what it means. Uh, he's, he's on his way now, because Perks is recalling. At, yeah, I'm looking at Sven Skirin, wondering about the time. Get in there, Sven. On that Herald buff. There's a little bit of support coming from TSM, moving towards the mid lane, and nobody from G2's reacted just yet. Yeah, well, as soon as they see Kogma in the bottom lane, I think they place they the turret in the middle. So they're there much faster than G2. Here it comes. They're going to power this turret down and maybe get two, but most likely not. I think they're going to let the Rift Herald finish it off, and Bjergsen will get the solo gold, maybe? Well, single charge, yep, scatter the weak stun tags, Bjergsen, but no further follow-up. He's starting to stack some armor as well. A little Herald goes down, look at the back end, double of going for the solo kill. Not going to be enough just yet, but almost takes down Sven. Sven gets a small win and holds on to his flash, something that I'm going to keep an eye on. <laughs> <laughs> Both top laners actually canceled TP after they were. Maybe looking to join a fight, but now if you are G2 Esports, all your lanes are going to get pushed down. You are against global compositions on the side of TSM. And it gets really hard then to actually push out your lanes and fight for vision. So it should be a TSM-controlled map with Baron yep. also spawning. Yeah, that's the big thing that TSM needs to be able to do. They have the advantage. They're up three turrets to one. They also have the big goal lead, and they have large amounts of initiation. This is the proving point for TSM, because they actually had pretty similar advantages to these at MSI in a game that could have actually clinched them, the bracket stage, but they failed to convert against G2 because I do feel like G2 is actually very good in these situations, where TSM, not so much. Well, we have to see if uh, history repeats itself, whether or not G2 can find a way to claw their, themselves back into the game, because it was reliant on Team Solomon making those mistakes. And what's really exciting is you very rarely get to see two teams play against one another in such a uh, short space of time, North America versus Europe. Mm -hmm. Jat, you've talked a lot about the seven one record <laughs> of NA teams versus EU teams in terms of the group stage, the non-important games, as it were. I looked into that specifically. Yeah. So basically, the last Between year... MSI and World. Yeah, yeah. So last year, you know, we had 2016, 2017, seven one North America. Mm -hmm. Doesn't count for Rift Rivals, because uh, four of those wins are CLG beating G2. Mm. And we all know that CLG is G2's kryptonite. So, so <laughs> and CLG is, CLG is not here, so that doesn't count. Yep. Then there was the TSM 2-0 over Splice. Do you see Splice and Rift Splice Rivals? Splice isn't here. No, Splice, yeah. they're not here. So oh, technically, no. EU versus NA at Rift Rivals is 1-1. 
of just the teams that are here. Of the teams here. Yeah. I think everyone, North American European fans, can agree it's just 1 1 between the regions. We all even. And also, right? Look at TSM. Since I believe 2011, all of their games against EU, 31 and 31. It's <laughs> kind of yep. crazy uh, how close the wins and losses are between these yeah, two. I wanted you to fight me at that point. <laughs> be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> North America! There's nothing to fight. You, you laid out a well-reasoned argument, mm -hmm. Deficio. Congratulations. I do want to give a shout-out to CLG and the 4-0, though. That was actually very impressive. It was year. indeed. G2 started this split with the mini vacation, and they're still struggling for it. Here comes Perks with a scatter of the week. Unleashed power comes up. Mithy forced to flash defensively. Nobody on TSM is at risk, but Perks is! Cleanse comes down, and... The bomb's not going to be enough to kill him. Yet again, nobody dies. That's a big win for G2, though. They still keep the flash on Kogma. Yeah, they had to burn it on their support. But he's cannon fodder in the later game fights. And Expect didn't even have to leave the lane. So I think TSM potentially loses pressure off of that one because they used all their ultimates. I actually wonder if the TSM could have started Baron right there because Perks was so low and had to, go, had to go back to base while TPs were up on the side of TSM. But they didn't start it. They're still baiting around. Remember Trick here? It's very valuable on the wreck side to see if anyone is moving around. Flash. Tongue lash, but no further follow-up. A winter's bite comes down from Mithy as he puts up the unbreakable. Sven trying to fire the Bio Arcane Barrage with that Blade of the Ruined King. And as it stands, the tension continues to build. G2 looking to re-engage. The Unburrow gets two. There's a body slam as well. Perks of Scatter the Week, not the greatest. And the taunt only catches Expect. This is good for G2 Esports. Mithy's the target as the Unbreakable blocks some damage. And Sven takes down Hornsa. It's MSI all over again. Yeah, doesn't this feel rather familiar? TSM has a big lead. But it's but almost too early. <laughs> are not even that big of a thing. Sven already able to stay safe behind that big, beefy front line we talked about. The get the Ragas and the Braum keeping them so safe. Two early kills on a Sven and pretty lackluster initiation attempts by TSM. And what happened just before the fight was Expect who was sitting bot lane, you know, had the little engage, he didn't have TP ready, he got to push out the bot lane, he walked all the way up to the Baron, while Hansa then showed up in bot lane, so G2 knew we got about four and a half seconds right now to engage a fight, Hansa won't be here in time, and that's why with the Righteous Lorry Gragas, he's going aggressive, because look at the minimap, Java in his bottom lane, and this is where G2 feels confident, starting the fight, get a small advantage, and now with Hansa joining, the HP is slightly in favor of G2, and it's only G2's front line getting hit, Yep, exactly. These initiations where TSM is not making it to the Syndra or the Kogma are fool's errands. They're not going to win those fights if they're initiating on the G2 tank. So it's rather difficult for them uh, when they're down their ultimates to not, to not make those plays. I commend G2 for making that initiation while the Jarvan wasn't there. And also knowing the TSM was out there big initiation ultimates. Oh, double lift! Oh, nice oh double lift and so much trouble to follow by some time. He stays alive. Ooh. The Prey Seeker's body block. But they managed to escape. And so, double have learned, you shouldn't use your Tristana jump away from a Gragas, because he will get interrupted and in the air. Gentlemen, gentlemen, Double Lift lost his flash. Sven, in all of these exchanges, has held onto it and still holds onto it as a second Cloud Drake is picked up. Bring North America to Europe and all you get is Cloud Drakes. Love it. That's actually a great point. We normally get a lot of Infernals here. Suddenly, Jad is casting with us, double cloud for G2. But again, this is why we talked about this in Champs League, of how TSM's like mid game should be really good and where they can really start snowballing because late game against all these, you know, frontline tanks and then mm -hmm. the hyper carry from, uh, from Sven, it gets harder and harder to win fights unless you can get proper flanks. Yeah, and G2 is playing a style that is generally forcing TSM to make the right initiation. When is the last time we saw G2 on TSM's side of the map? It just actually hasn't happened. They have three blue trinkets, so whenever TSM goes for Baron, they pop another one down, as we see right there, and they force TSM into a decision. Now, though, Haunts are on ward. They know that they're baiting for a fight. Let's see it. Haunts gets tagged up. Sorry, Deficios, he is caught to the Unbarrow. The Void Ooze buys a couple seconds of time as the hero's entrance comes down. Trick is the target, 300 HP. Great Cataclysm from Hornsa. Sven with the flash manages to escape. Perks takes down Sven Skerrin. Bjergsen trying to get onto Sven. Mithy's on the front line with the help of Expect, and everybody from TSM is low. Winds of War Sven. tagging on Sven, but he's unkillable. That's a double kill for Perks. Looking for more from TSM, and the gold lead matters not. TSM have not been able to use a Javan 
engaged right into a good Galio ulti that actually hits the back line of G2. This one was used on Trick specifically, so while Sven had to use his flash to get out of the Javan ulti, he was then safe right after. Gentlemen, this is where Team Solo made activate post-traumatic stress disorder 26 minutes in and g2 with a great baron react yeah hearts are using his flag and drake on the rec side and then what is that galio ultimate it's used way too early you need to use that on the cataclysm textbook use of this team composition it allows perks and sven in this case to kind of free hit the back of the fight bjergsen stuck there you can see double if doesn't have a last whisper yet so we can't cut through expect and yes the 3000 gold lead doesn't mean anything when the fights are playing out in this way and g2 using their team fighting skills much better than team PSN. So, G2, they were down 5k gold a little while ago. Look at the team fight damage from that previous fight. It's G2 that come away with all of the advantages. As that pops away, gentlemen, I want you to look at the itemization. Um, goggles, stone plate picked up by Trick uh, with the Cinder Hulk. Some changes to that Rek'Sai build. Righteous Glory, Spirit's Visage on the side of Expect, and the Rage Blade for Sven. A lot of traditional itemization on the side of TSM so far. The thing about Rageblade uh, as an item is it's absolutely fantastic. If you always have targets right in front of you, you can hit. If you can just stand down, shoot, 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 it's great. Because you always need some time to stack up. Expect uh, going in aggressively, did not see Biofrost, the thing, around the yeah. corner. There was no ward from G2 in that brush and ended up using his flash for nothing, basically. Yeah, did not account for the Tom Kench, but I did like the thought of the initiation, seeing that both TSM soul leaners were trying to set up the one for one to get wave control for the Baron. And I really think this is the moment for TSM, despite losing some fights, to actually then take the Baron and get back in this game, because there's no TP on Expect, there's no flash on him, so he's not gonna be that useful on the map and actually at starting a fight. Double if just completed three full items, so he has to double zeal now. This is the moment for TSM to actually get that big objective. I completely agree, because the shielding and protection items will be coming through from G2, but they're not there yet. You can see the components for Knight's Vow and Mithy. That's guaranteed going on Sven, and there's still no locket completed on anyone for G2, so TSM should force here, and G2 has to answer. If they fight, watch to see if Sven gets jumped on. Oh, well, that's what I'm looking for. The There's the fight. Broom comes up, Perks is a target. He used the flash earlier. TSM with all the tools available. Easily take down Perks. It's a four on five. TSM still maintain control. Yes, yeah, Sven Skarin has no flash. They use the majority of their initiation. It's going to be much harder for them to re-engage this next time. All right, Baron, 6,000 HP. It's not going very low. Double of trying his best to get those autos down. 4,000 HP. Knock up onto Bjergsen as he is now thinking about turning. Took Tricks going in onto the front line. Tricks the target. 2,000 HP. Barrel from Expect splits up TS7. Mithy's blocking what he can. Sven remains untouched. He's got Bjergsen. The Devourer comes out. Now Biofrost is stunned. Needs to pop the Grey Health. Bjergsen running for his life. Crucially for the EU LCS, Baron is interrupted. G2 playing that extremely well. Just staying outside, letting TSM take a lot of damage from the Baron. You could see since Scarum was standing in the back because he couldn't actually get close enough due to low HP. Now, TSM are still staying around with a few guys, and they're actually TPing in right now. Yeah, they want this fight. Expect with a good barrel. That's going to slow down Hornsa. No Cataclysm available, and Bjergsen teleports as well. That's a double dip for TSM. Get Kobe in here to yell his uh, famous little line. And yeah. Perks is already back on the map, pushing through the mid lane. G2 knocked over only their second tower as we approach 30 minutes. Oh, TSM, why would you just try and all in with double TP right there? You could still have used it to try and get some push in the side lanes into your Baron setup. Right now, flashes will be ready for next fight for G2 Esports, unless yep. the fight happens in like another 10, 15 seconds. And TSM, they are still around that one objective they've been going for, the Baron itself. Yeah, and we're still in the midst of this window, but G2 is playing around it uh, very, very well. I love the fact that they know TSM can't kill Baron quickly, but now they're oh, it's happening. The flash. Sven they is the target, it. not going to be able to escape this time round, but the knockback is for time. Sven is taken down by Hornsor and Bjergsen as they double up. Defensive moves from the rest of G2. Knock up under the tower. Perks manages to cleanse them till Sven Skaring gets that venomous bite. Reset from double lift. Rocket jump into flash. Trick is the target. Red buff bursting away as he rocket jumps back to safety. They Got the fight just in time. They had a few seconds left before flashes from Perks and Sven would be ready. They instantly engaged with G2 walking up that mid lane. Hanser and Bjergsen with the synergy this time around. They actually win the fight. They get the Baron. I don't know how it took them so long. It's very simple. You use the Jarvan ult on the Kog'Ma and Galio ult after. You're done. Then you win the fight. It took them 31 minutes to do it, but they finally do it and they get the Baron.
It's a marathon, Jad, not oh a sprint here. You know, you can take your time as long as you get the Baron. TSM versus G2 is always a marathon. As we saw just a few months ago, they'll get their hands on their second Drake, Ocean, and then Infernal. That'll set them up for Elder as well. The funny thing is, it's a marathon for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> because it's G2 getting outplayed in the early game by TSM consistently, and then it's TSM struggling to get that big advantage to really say, now we can try and close out the game. This took them 30 minutes to get a fight like this here. No flash on Sven. They get onto him with everything. And G2 Esports were most likely saying, like, we got a few seconds left on the flashes. Don't fight, don't fight. And then they see the Javan fly over the wall, and suddenly they lose the fight. Yeah, to Sven's credit, he hasn't been giving TSM many opportunities, which is why they've been using it on some other people. Uh, still think they should have done it a little bit earlier because now I do feel like the game is at a breaking point. Looking at the way that the Galio and the Jarvan build, you see the Titanic Hydra and the Black Cleaver from Jarvan and then tank items. And you only see tank items from the Galio. That fight had the Knight's Vow on Sven from Mithy. And you saw how long it took for them to kill Sven. His health pool will only increase. And this fight, they have a Gargoyle Stone Plate lock it on trip. If he uses both of those, it is a 2,000 health shield onto Sven. So that dive might not work again now that the defensive items have been built by G2. Well, let's see how effective Team Solo Mid are with their first Baron buff. Scatter the Week comes out onto Bjergsen. And this is only the first battle here at Rift Rivals. Quick reminder of the format for everybody watching. It is a double round robin best of one group stage. So NA will play all EU teams. They'll do that twice. And the number one ranked NA team will face off against the number one ranked EU team from this group stage in a best of five on Saturday. Let's get back to the action as expect is forced to flash away. Flash economics has proven to be very valuable and important this game. And TSM, they're looking to take another tower. Expect and Trick gonna come in for some sort of re-engage. Hero's entrance comes down. G2 need to tunnel away to safety. It's everything Set. burned though. It like doesn't look like it. Bjergsen tries to just as punch. Rest of TSM backing away. Double lift's not here. Double lift is pushing the mid lane. Bjergsen's at threat. Gets the Duran down. Oh, Biofrost! By some time. And Biofrost, baby, saves TSM. That play all started with Biofrost going bot lane with his ulti while Double lift was pushing mid lane. So this is why Double lift now picked up two towers. Opens up the mid lane and this bot lane tower needs one hit from TSM to go down. And this is the forward thinking shot calling that was not present at MSI that allowed G2 to win a game, almost win both. This time around TSM accelerate that gold lead. It's just shy of 9,000 gold. They've got six towers. That's an exceptional Baron power play in terms of map control and pressure. And we talked earlier about double with getting a you know, double zeal item completed. There's a last whisper in it also upgraded now. So suddenly this Tristana, while of course she's still hitting just tanks right in front of her, her damage is very, very legit. And yeah, Sven of course is at a good point with the rage blade, but he's actually a full, he's a full item behind. And yeah. he, he's kind of alone as well in hitting the front line of TSM. Exactly, three item Kogma, but it's a four item Jarvin and a four item Galio that Sven has to shred through while they're diving him. So TSM still at a much stronger point right here. I want Sven to still be completing more items. And that last fight you got to see in a 4v5 how long Bjergsen was able to just sit and take all of the damage. So that's another thing G2 has to fight up against. Pretty heavily itemized into Sven's damage there with Randune's home and Frozen Art and the Goggles Stone Plate. Haunts has got a Goggles of his own and the Thorn Mail. Cocoon will cost Mithy his life. There's the Triss damage coming through, finally. Really easily set up by TSM on the invade. This is not your jungle anymore, G2. TSM have invaded and they've got control. Yeah, and this is a little bit better than the MSI game from TSM, but we know TSM vs G2 is never over until the Nexus actually reaches zero health. They have been so yes. back and forth uh, in the two games they played this year. And on screen, Inhibitor falls as TSM's Baron has worn off a little while ago. Got themselves some pressure on the bottom lane. Another good cocoon from Sven Skira, and he's finding his targets. Nearly 100% kill participation. Shows you just how much this game has revolved around the team play. Scatter the Week comes out. Perks does not pull the trigger on the Unleashed Power. But they did use that Baron to get a massive gold advantage, and more importantly, open that mid lane as well with the inhib. They're going for another tower. So right. to the fight. Scatter the Week comes out. I'm looking for Expect Barrel to split up TSM. There it is. Biofrost is on the front line, but Double Lift remains unkilled. Sven is untouched. Stun. Perks has got one. That was a three or four man stun. Bjergsen's a target of Sven, while the rest of G2 tried to get TSM. This will buy some time as Bjergsen maintains his life for a few seconds longer. Ooh. Double Lift flashes forward for the kill. 
But flash economics means if another fight breaks out, he needs to be extra careful. Yeah, Triss a little more mobile than Kogba, still has the rocket jumps. Trip got a little bit ambitious at the end of that fight. Rexai ulting to chase onto double lift while the rest of G2 was dealing with Bjergsen and a re-engage. What? Oh, what? what? Oh, what? Go what? Down. <laughs> that flag and drag was just uh, sad. A few questionable flag and drags. Can we go back to base so you can buy game. items? See, he wanted that BF yeah. sword so Ooh. badly. Uh, you can see a little bit of a face palm on the player cam as well. Haunter knows that wasn't his best of decision. But you know what? Trick said, I'll re-engage. Haunter figured he should have a shot too. Yeah, and TSM here definitely overstayed. They wanted to get the turret without the Baron buff. So what happened is Doublelift took a lot of damage on the back end of the fight, but then was only at about 25% health, so can never really fully engage. And some massive stuns came through from Perks. The extended team fight after all thing, getting the multi-ball stun. Also, Mithy finding his way just in front of Doublelift, standing there, put up his shield, you know, at this point, Braum is actually fairly tanky because he's able to build things like Knight's Vow. He's now going towards Locket as well. So it is actually pretty hard to kill Mithy quickly. And he's able to just stand right there in front of Double Lift, making sure he does no damage. This, um... Ja, uh, ja, what do yeah. you think Horns is thinking? Yeah. He's thinking triple kill, but this is not going <laughs> to happen. He had the Blast Cone right there for a free escape. Double lift and spend scare and maybe thought they'd be able to take the three and three, but Elder Drake going down right now. TSM has to fight it. All right, teleports coming in from behind the pit. It's Hornsa with Cataclysm available. This is going to be massive. Gets Interrupted. Him. Locks down Sven. Sven decides to flash away as a, a knockup comes down. Justice Punch kind of interrupted by Bjergsen. Sven is life stealing the best that he can. Perks is holding on to that unleashed power while Double Lift kept the Elder Dragon engaged. They're just going to go for this. They have two Drakes right now and they know they got resetting G2 very slow. That was a hard reset, but G2 completely abandoned. Him. We give it over to TSM after Engage coming in from Haunter from the side right there. That fourth two flashes once again from the carries on G2 Esports. So that's kind of the, the fun thing about this game is the first fight you take, as long as you get Ooh. flashes, that's almost a win in itself for the next one. And they're actually going straight for Baron. Yeah, they do not have a control ward. They're sweeping their approach, but they do not see that Why ward Frost in the back. Sweep so G2 though. knows it's there, but Trick is on the wrong side of the map. This is Baron too. Yeah, easily secured despite expect having teleports TSM get Elder Dragon and Baron on the same buff. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it, but we've seen this before. <laughs> You're always <laughs> prepping them excuses right there. Yeah. It's happened twice in a row where they've had 10,000 gold leads against G2. They have fell the inhibitor, and they do have initiations with a Kog'Maw who is flashless. So they need to continue to push potentially on this set of double buffs because this this only comes around every so often. Elder Drake's every 10 minutes, Baron's every 6. Very rarely do you get both at the same time and a 10,000 gold lead. But after we've now seen them actually combine the Java and engage with the Gallio ulti, no flash on the side of Perks and Sven as well. Like, it should be enough for TSM to walk down and actually win this game. Double lift as well, five fully completed items. So it's not like you have a weak late game AD carry by any yep. means. As long as you keep Sven, Busy in the back line. Mm -hmm. Double if will, with some time, take down the front line of G2 as well. Well, oh, Double yeah. if 503, by the way, and he's going to have some front line of his own. Haunts has got that GA completed, and uh, Bjergsen's working towards another armor item. So, unkillable front line for TSM. Yeah. They have 45 seconds left on the Selder Drake. They have a Baron buff wave with a cannon. But they're also not grouped to push with that wave. They should actually be all hitting on this wave. They're going to get it at least, and now maybe cycle the second and third inhibitors down because they got a wave on the top side as well. Yeah, you almost have to wait for the Elder Drake buff to expire before you can really do anything as G2 Esports. But it sucks to see, of course, that bot lane and him go down so quickly. It means now the top lane suddenly is the next focus. Big minion wave on the way from TSM as well. They're getting everything. And that mid inhibitor is just about to respawn. It's a few seconds away. G2 will at least no longer have to deal with Elder in just a few more seconds, likely as this wave is crashing into the tower. Looking at the minimap though, guys, Hornsa trying to set up on the flank. He's got flash available to him and can look for another cataclysm in the river. It was so impactful. Instead, Hornsa is just going to walk right in. Flag and drag for the engage. Gets it down onto Spurks and Sven. Heroic entrance. This has to be the game. Sven scares the target. How is Sven not dead? The target is down. Sven stays alive. The stun comes down. And finally, Sven and Perks are killed. The North American LCS are taking down EU. Expect and Trick are running for their lives. Believe me, G2, this game is over.
41 minutes in, they get the initiation once again on Sven. Deficio, we talked a lot about what they should do. Well, they did it. They pulled off the initiation. And that's, that's why they're winning. Game. That's going to be the game. The Nexus turrets are falling. His double lift hops forward, unkilled, untouched, and unthreatened. Team Solo Mid strike first in Rift Rivals 2017. Got to feel slightly satisfying for TSM. It's no MSI victory, but they still, as Deficio, as Quickshot said, strike first here at MSI with the Galio, mm. with double lift on a hyper carry. Stalled out a little bit in the mid to late game against G2, but they do take him down. Yeah, they have to find the right engages and kind of figure out, okay, how are we actually going to set up these fights? And in the end, they figured it out, you know, go on to Sven with Galio and Jarvan at the same time. Have you guys heard the saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same? We go from Brazil, MSI, EU LCS, NALCS to Berlin, and we see a very similar game throughout the majority, but great addition yeah. at the end for TSM. But here we have to talk about jet lag for G2 Esports. It's been a 30-minute <laughs> yeah. drive it's from true. the gaming house it's to true. the studio. That's 30 yeah. minutes in a car. You can lose a lot of focus Not there. Just yeah. any car. I imagine they also didn't get to eat hotel breakfast this morning. That probably hurt them. TSM did. Yeah. They're very nutritious here in Germany. So I'm sure it's going to change for the next few days. You know, Jax, it really feels like G2 uh, uh, it looks like they're playing with jet lag, but they just aren't. <laughs> aren't, right? you never know. <laughs> Look, great play from TSM. Bjergsen, huge smiles along with Sven Skerritt, Hornster, and the rest of the squad. I mean, a, a few questions, a few decisions you can criticize in the mid-game, but yeah. overall, strong early game, strong close, eventually strong mm -hmm. usage of that team composition. Yeah. yeah, and listen, we got a lot of games. TSM plays the sixth game of the day, which is in about five hours. Then they play two more on Thursday, two more on Friday, and then we'll see if they make it to the final. So the start of a very long series of games, and it's a very good start for TSM because not yes. only did they beat G2, but also they did it with the team composition they haven't traditionally excelled with. It wasn't the Syndra Lee Sin. It